to episode six of the Sussex Local podcast recorded in January 2021. For 20 minutes or so, we'll try to take you away from the worst of COVID, lockdown, Brexit, floods and snow. So sit back and have a listen to what we have lined up this episode. Just to cheer ourselves up then, we start with a tale of murder, mayhem, smuggling and general skullduggery in Yapton near Arundel, although you'll be relieved to hear these dark deeds happened in the 18th century. Local historian Alan Misselbrook tells all. Also in this episode, hands up who knew they had a vagus nerve. No, frankly, nor did I, but apparently it's there in each of us, linking major organs and having quite an effect on our physical and mental health. Nick Koish tells us how to look after it in the health spot and staying on the healthy living theme, which is so important for us all in lockdown. We have a fabulous competition to win a pack of superfoods developed by nutritionist and author Denise Kelly. As usual, we'll sprinkle around some feel good Sussex snippets and community stories from the county. So thanks for listening. And here we go. V2 Radio is back, available online via the dedicated V2 app on smart speakers and across Sussex on DAB Digital Radio. The new station will fill the gap in local coverage that was created by the demise of Spirit FM. Home to some of West Sussex's favourite radio presenters, the V2 Radio lineup includes Ian Crouch, Millie Luxford and Nick Hobbs. Sussex Police Commissioner Katie Bourne will be launching a new police and crime plan in the coming weeks. Working with the force and with the Sussex Police and Crime Panel and addressing the public's priorities, Ms Bourne says this will ensure we have the smartest policing approach to make us safer in Sussex. Aaron and Chichester Citizens Advice are pleased to announce the launch of a brand new home energy advice service to help those who live in West Sussex with their home energy bills and home energy improvements. The qualified home energy advisors can be contacted on 01243 974-063 on Monday to Friday and is available to any West Sussex resident who may be worried about keeping warm, help or support with energy bills, energy grants and schemes, energy building improvements and more. Support is available across all housing tenures, including homeowners, private and social renters. If you own an Arbart and want to meet fellow owners, then the Arbart Club Sussex organises regular meets, museum visits and joint meets with other clubs. Obviously, there's not much happening at the moment, but you can still share photos and chat on their Facebook group where you can always find people willing to help you out or just talk all things Arbart. For more information, head to arbartclubsussex.co.uk. A small band of volunteers is keeping an ancient country craft alive and providing a valuable habitat for wildlife at the same time. The Way and Aran Canal Trust team are laying a hedge along the canal at Loxwood using a technique which has been unchanged for centuries. To find out more, head to wayandaran.co.uk. Yapton near Arundel was a hotbed of smuggling in the 18th century. Local historian Alan Misselbrook has a tale of a vicious gang getting revenge for missing contraband. Insert your own horror piano chords here and let's go. The murder of Richard Hawkins of Yapton. It wasn't so very long ago that the name Yapton conjured up images of smuggling The phrase, do you come from Yapton, was often directed at anyone who entered a room or building and left the door wide open. The phrase is even stenciled on the saloon bar door of the Murrell Public House in Barnham. The reference is believed to be associated with the custom of villagers leaving their doors open at night to allow smugglers to evade the king's men or to leave contraband as payment for their silence. Because of the poverty that existed in the 18th and early 19th centuries, it is highly possible that many villagers were not averse to turning a blind eye or even assisting the smugglers. They could probably earn in a night as much as they could in a week of toil in the fields. There are local tales of a vicar giving a sermon highlighting the wrongs of smuggling while unbeknown to him, under the pulpit from which he was preaching, was a stash of contraband. Another story relates to a cache of smuggled goods stored in a tomb in the churchyard. 
Heavy import duties charged by the government at that time made the activity of smuggling very lucrative for gangs to take the risk of bringing in luxury goods such as spirits, silk, tobacco and tea through the back door. The shallow sandy beaches such as Middleton, Climping and Ferring were ideal for these midnight ventures. One of the most notorious gangs operating along the south coast was the Hawkehurst Gang, named after the village in Kent where they originated from. They were a vicious breed of men and would not hesitate to commit murder should they deem it necessary. It was in January 1748 that their evil actions were experienced in Yapton, in a barn belonging to a Mr Boniface, Richard Hawkins, a farm labourer, was threshing corn. Unbeknown to him, members of the Hawkehurst gang had hidden 12 bags of tea in the building. Two members of the gang, Jeremiah Butler Curtis and John Smoker Mills, came to collect the smuggled goods and found that two bags were missing. They assumed that Hawkins had taken them. After they had discovered his whereabouts, they held him at gunpoint, sat him on the saddle of Mills's horse and rode to an alehouse on Slindon Common by the name of the Dog and Partridge. Here, according to accounts of the inquest and subsequent trial, he was taken into a back room where other members of the gang were waiting. A smuggler's court was held with Mills, Curtis, Thomas Winter and a fourth smuggler by the name of Rob, alias Little Fatback, being the judge and the jury. Hawkins was tortured, punched, kicked and whipped by them. In an attempt to stop further beatings, Hawkins implicated his father-in-law, John Cockrell, Sr., of Warburton, and his brother-in-law, also named John Cockrell, a Yapton alehouse keeper. While two of the smugglers left to find the father and brother-in-law and take them prisoner, Hawkins died of his injuries. The two smugglers on their return released the prisoners after swearing them to secrecy and took the body of Hawkins and carted it to Parham Park, owned by Sir Cecil Bishop, weighted it down with rocks and immersed it in a lake where it lay undiscovered for nine months. Following an investigation and a pardon being given by the Crown to a smuggler who had nothing to do with the murder but supplied incriminating evidence, John Mills and John Reynolds, master of the Dog and Partridge, were arrested. They were tried at East Grinstead Assizes, but unfortunately Curtis by this time had escaped arrest by fleeing to France. Reynolds was found not guilty of murder, but was later tried, along with his wife, for withholding information. John Mills, aged 30, was found guilty of murder, and hung from a gibbet on Slindon Common near to the Dog and Partridge. Afterwards, his body was hung in chains from the same gibbet as an example to other would-be murderers. The irony of the tale is that on a further search of the barn, the missing bags of tea were found. Alan Musselbrook, Yapton and Ford, Local History Group. Sussex's share of the national uplift of 6,000 police officers for next year will be 121 additional officers and six extra officers for the Regional Organised Crime Unit, according to Katie Bourne, Sussex Police Commissioner. Inspired by images of protest placards made by young people, Liz Long of Apron, a community arts and craft initiative based in Shoreham, wanted to give a diverse group of underrepresented young people a creative outlet to express where they are in the midst of all that is happening in their world right now. Apron have supplied a pack with a simple call to action to young people to use word art to make their mark on this moment in history. Young people are invited to get involved in the project and upload their work in the hope that the exhibition will take place again in the near future. Apron are displaying large-scale prints of some of the works alongside donated artworks to share with passers-by in the windows of Colonnade House in Worthing from the 2nd to the 28th of February. To find out more, visit ourworldinourwords.org. 
The Wonders of the Red Planet, live tours of the night sky, stunning astrophotography, nocturnal wildlife talks, children's colouring activities and a chance to win a top-of-the-range telescope are among the highlights of the South Downs National Park's upcoming Dark Skies Festival. The fortnight of cosmic fun begins on Friday the 12th of February with an action-packed lineup brought directly to you, including top tips for stargazing from your garden. The event celebrates the National Park's status as an international dark sky reserve, one of only 18 in the world, and recognising it as one of the best places globally to capture immense views of the stars. Coinciding with Half Term, the park hopes it's going to give people of all ages some fun learning and interesting activities they can do while staying at home. Details and how to take part will be available at southdowns.gov.uk forward slash dark dash night dash skies forward slash festival. A new plan which sets out what the West Sussex County Council should focus on in the future and how it should spend its money has been endorsed at a Cabinet meeting in January. The reset plan sets out the key priority outcomes for the Council over the next four years and guides how budgets are allocated and performance is measured. It takes learning from the response to COVID-19 and focuses on what is needed most for residents both now and in the future. The County Council has worked with partners and staff and has considered the views of its residents when putting this plan together. Cabinet also agreed its budget for 2021-2022 and this will also go to the full Council meeting on Friday the 12th of February for final approval. The vagus nerve is sometimes called the body's information superhighway, as Michael Caine might have said. Not a lot of people know that. Well, now you do. Storrington's friendly osteopath Nick Koish tells us how to best look after it and why. Hello and welcome to NCTV episode 40, Activate Your Vegas Nerve. So cutting straight to the chase, I know what you're thinking. A, what is the vagus nerve? B, why would I want or need to activate it? And C, how do I activate it? Firstly, if we take all three points in turn, the vagus nerve is the longest nerve with the widest distribution in the body. It starts in the brain and it travels to the gut, heart and other major muscles and organs. Importantly, its main function is to help you rest and digest. So why would you want or need to activate it? Shouldn't it just automatically do it as its job? The answer is of course, yes, it should. However, Common issues like inflammation, stress, or particular physical trauma can interfere with the nerve's ability to function. How do you know if the vagus nerve isn't functioning properly? Well, part of its function is to induce a state of calm on the body by initiating the relaxation response following either stress, hyperarousal, or a period of fear, flight, or fight. Therefore, some of the signs that your vagus nerve function may be impeded could be that you feel like you can't escape stress mode and feel as though you're in a constant state of anxiety, your blood pressure is consistently too high, you suffer from brain fog, your memory is clouded, you have food sensitivities, digestive problems, you're feeling fatigued, or you have poor quality sleep. If some of these issues are left unchecked, then it could eventually lead to various health conditions. So by stimulating the vagus nerve, this has the potential to help with the likes of anxiety disorders, heart disease, some forms of cancer, poor circulation, leaky gut syndrome, Alzheimer's, memory and mood disorders, migraines and headaches, fibromyalgia, obesity, tinnitus, addiction, autism, autoimmune conditions and more. So now we know what the vagus nerve is, why it may not be functioning properly and the health issues this can create, we can now move on to the final question being, how do you activate it? So here are 19 ways you can exercise the and stimulate the vagus nerve, courtesy of Dr. Navaz Habib's book on the matter. Firstly, cold showers. Studies have shown that this helps to reduce the fight and flight response 
and increase the rest and digest function, which is regulated by your vagus nerve. Secondly, singing or chanting increases your heart rate variability, and when done particularly loudly, you will be working the muscles at the back of your throat and activating the vagus nerve as a result. So you can use that as an excuse next time you're caught singing in your car. Similarly, gargling water every morning will contract the muscles at the back of the throat, thus stimulating the vagus nerve and digestive tract. It's actually best performed to the point of tearing in the eyes, which is another vagus nerve response and a good sign that it has indeed been stimulated. Next, yoga will activate the rest and digest element of the vagus nerve, which in turn will help your blood pressure, uh, your blood flow, your lung capacity and function, whilst improving your mood and reduce stress and anxiety levels. Also meditation and mindfulness are good for these reasons as well. Uh, plus, if you combine the chanting of OM, then you'll really be in for a winner. Slow and deep breathing also stimulates the vagus nerve to help lower your, bro your blood pressure and heart rate, reducing the fight or flight response and increasing the rest and digest one. For a bonus tip, make sure it's abdominal breathing as opposed to coming from your shoulders and chest. As with singing and chanting, laughter is actually just as good as at stimulating the vagus nerve, although perhaps not quite as sustainable as the former. But don't let that stop you watching a comedy or stand-up, knowing that you'll actually be promoting good health in doing so. Next, probiotics. Help to promote your uh, good bacteria in your gut. Your gut is connected to your brain via the vagus nerve, so if there's more bad bacteria in the gut, then this will promote poor neurochemistry, which disrupts the vagus nerve function. Light exercise has been shown to stimulate uh, gut flow and gastric motility, which is mediated by the vagus nerve, meaning the vagus nerve gets stimulated with mild exercise. Without going too much into more details on how these work to stimulate the vagus nerve, here are the remaining 10 things that will help do the trick. Fasting, massage, tai chi, fish oil, particularly omega-3 fatty acids, tongue depressors to stimulate the gag reflex, acupuncture to the ear, serotonin supplements, contracting your abdominal core muscles, um, eating in a relaxed state, and chewing your food well. So there you have it. Following these exercises and habits will not only make you feel better, it will allow you to experience the world in a relaxed, calm, and enjoyable state. Happy gardening, and I'll see you next time for some more bite-sized bits to help your health flourish. Bye-bye for now. West Sussex County Council would like your feedback on their new online pothole reporting form trial, which aims to make it easier for residents to use and to keep up to date with everything to do with West Sussex roads and pavements, including gritting and verge cutting. A new highways residents newsletter is being launched. Visit their website and scroll down to roads and travel. Staying with West Sussex, work has been underway to design and implement a single telephone number and email address for use by professionals and the public for all concerns relating to children, regardless of risk and complexity. This will simplify the process for the public and professionals and has been designed to ensure that children's needs are reviewed quickly by a joined up early help and social care team. This is a positive change in how we ensure that children come first and that we improve the journey of the child in everything we do. The new contact details, which go live on the 29th of January 2021, are as follows. The telephone number is 01403. 22900. The email address is WS Children Services at westsussex.gov.uk. The existing contact numbers will be directed to the new number. Hastings is now a pilot area for Project ADDA Addiction, Disruption, Diversion, Enforcement, Recovery an initiative to help the police, local authorities, health and other partners work together to reduce drug-related deaths.
The town has been awarded £4.35 million to be spent over the next two and a half years, helping to reduce the supply of drugs, increase recovery services and reduce reoffending. This new funding will bolster the proactive policing already underway in Sussex, but its main focus is to increase drug treatments available to addicts in the local area, helping people to break the cycle of addiction and offending and get their lives back on track. Chichester District Council will be one of five local authorities in England taking part in a new 2.5 million tree planting project with the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, DEFRA, which aims to increase tree cover in rural and urban areas. The council will lead the subsidised tree planting pilot scheme, which looks to help tackle climate change and boost biodiversity by establishing novel ways to increase tree planting in cities, towns and countrysides. And now for our competition. Denise Kelly has been working all over the world as a nutritionist for the last 15 years and has recently written a book called The Art of Healthy Living. She has also developed a range of superfoods and we have a pack to give away in our prize competition this month. Here's Editor Chris with all the details. We've got a wonderful competition in this episode with a prize which could help you start or maintain a healthy eating plan. Denise Kelly has been working as a nutritionalist all over the world for 15 years. Last year, she published her book, The Art of Healthy Living, and she also designed her first line of superfood blends called the Thrive S Range. At the moment, there are six blends in the range called Shield, Super, Sleep, Skin, Sweet and Slim. Staying healthy and energised is all about being nutritionally rich. These superfood blends were specifically designed with that in mind. A pack costs around £28 and will last a month. You just use one scoop a day. For more information, you can visit www.lifeisforthriving.com. You can win two packs of Denise Kelly's superfood blends, your choice, plus a copy of Denise's book, The Art of Healthy Living. If you'd like to enter our competition, go to our website at www.sussexlocal.net forward slash features forward slash competitions. Details of how to enter are all on the website. Good luck. This podcast was written and produced by Jeff Nutbeam from Sussex Local. Presented by Cat Sims, theme music was composed and performed by Jimmy Sims and audio production and mixing was also by Jimmy Sims. Music